Thai Stories Live. She said, that'd be stupid. I said, look it up. And I've got it here. I'm going to read it to you. So here, then, so here, this is Paul trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, arise and go into the sea and you'll be told what to do. And the men who journeyed with him were stood speechless. Phyllis was speechless. I said, we need to go back. So we went back and rode around again. Nobody seemed to know. So I said, we'll leave a van, we'll walk. Maybe we'll find somebody. So we walked around looking for this address and suddenly we couldn't find the van anymore. We'd lost the van. We were in the middle of this town, this massive city. Eventually we came to another taxi uh, rank. They're all little tiny Skodas or Ladas. And I showed this guy and he says, get in. So we jump in the, in the back of his taxi and he drives away and we go past my vehicle. Now I don't know what to do. Should we stop or should we not? I said, remember where it is. And uh, but it was just around the corner from a church. And uh, when we got out, we could hear singing and I could hear an American preaching and we'd found it. It was just an amazing thing. It was, it was a supernatural thing. I had a good friend in England who was involved with this uh, men's fellowship. And he said, Malcolm, you've proved there's a God. He said, to have a scripture on a vehicle that actually means something at that time, he says, it's millions and billions to one. And God was setting things up for me. Eventually, we went to live in Czechoslovakia. We went back a few times, and then we went to live in Slovakia. And God provided for all our needs. We started a church there. We had a fellowship. So many gypsies got saved. We were a gypsy church, and so many of the gypsies came to know Jesus. They were just poor, oh, just uh, living ghettos with no electric, and it's just terrible. But they loved us, and uh, we see many. And today, many of them, actually, some of them are even in England. They have come. They got gypsy churches up in the north of England, and some of the pe people who got saved under us were are in England now. But we're on Facebook with many as well, aren't we? A wonderful thing you know god god just loves us you know jesus never went to the the, the high pieces it was always with the people with the down and outs the broken hide the, the, the lost the, you know the sick always ready to heal and what he says to us is do the same thing we now are his body of christ and god i believe is listening if you're listening today god is calling you to touch it and he wants he wants to give you a, a, a fresh start to wash everything away. He's a supernatural God. You know, not, going back to the Businessman's Fellowship in uh, 1990, I had a man called Drew Greenwood come down and speak from, from Scotland. Great guy. I, think, I believe he's with the Lord now, but uh, this was uh, 30 years ago. And... He spoke very well, and then he had some words of knowledge, and he called anybody who wanted prayer at the end uh, to come forward. And there was a long line. And because I was the president, I was the one going to put the chairs away and everything clear up. I joined the back of the line. But immediately in front of me was a man, I won't know his name, but he was a fourth, or third or fourth black belt, black uh, Dan. And uh, he was a known in the town as a real hard case. Someone had a group had picked on him one time and he'd, he'd thrown a lot of them in the skip. Uh, but he was, he got saved at a meet, uh, meeting before. And he was like uh, four months old, four weeks old in the Lord. And he goes, Malcolm, I, I promised my neighbor I, I was going to a religious meeting and I'd pray for a, their daughter who's lactose intolerant. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, he says, it's not. Drew Greenwood at Hills, is it? It's, Mel, it's Jesus. I said, exactly right, Dan. I said, exactly right. He said, would you pray for me? I said, well, I'll pray for you, but I want you to pray for me. I'd had an allergy for, for a long while, and, I mean, it was serious. I'd, I'd been to the doctors, and they wanted to do all these tests, couldn't find it. I mean, it wasn't just an allergy. It usually happened at weekends, and a, a handkerchief wasn't any good. I needed a towel with my eyes and uh, it was just terrible. And uh, all I could do was just go to bed and, and hope it would stop. So I told him I had this allergy and would he pray for me? He said, I don't know how to pray. I said, just pray like 
simple, you know, we don't want to be religious. God wants to help, listen to us. So I prayed for his neighbor, his daughter, and I believe she got healed as well. But he, he, he just put his big old hand on my shoulder and he said, heal my old mate, Malcolm, will you? That's all he said. And I sort of grinned and laughed to myself in my little way. You know, that was in, it was in uh, Christmas 1990. This is, Christmas is 31 years ago, and I've never had an allergy since. After a few weeks, I started to say, I've never had that allergy, and I've never had it since. God delivered me of migraines. I used to get a lot of migraines. If you've got allergies, if you've got migraines, God is in the healing business. It says, by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. We always think about Jesus going to the cross for our sins. And that's, that's true. That's the most important thing. It says that he, he who knew no sin became sin. He actually became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. But it also says he, on the cross, he took our sicknesses and our diseases. It tells us that. And it says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. He was whipped 39 times on his back. His back was torn open. And it's for our healing. And he did that for us. You know, if you feel you're on some curse of fear or doubt or anxiety, it says that he, be, he who hung on a tree became a curse that we might become a blessing. If you, if all these things are exchanged. If you look in the book of Corinthians, it's talking about money and it says that he became poor that we might become rich. God wants to bless us in each, every area of our life. He wants to deliver us from lack, from debt. He wants to deliver us from, from sickness. And all, all things that are troubling us from fear, anxiety, and worry. You know, we live in strange times, you know, over these last couple of years particularly. But God can give you peace in these things. There's a fear that's come upon the world. And, you know, I believe only God can do that. But God is in the healing business. We, we were in India one time and uh, we were praying for a group Right in, the, right in the country, we're praying for this group. Uh, there was a man that was deaf and dumb, and we prayed for him, and he started to, to speak. amazing what God can do. One time I was in India speaking at a, speak, at a meeting and I heard God speak to me. It's called the word of knowledge. And he said, there's somebody here that's going to commit suicide tonight. So I said it. I said, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but you need to come forward. It's a serious thing. You, you, you need to come forward uh, because you're going to commit suicide tonight. And this young man come forward. He said it was him. He'd already bought poison. 
he was going to drink poison. I mean, a terrible way to die. It burns you from the inside out. That's how they seem to do it in India. I said, well, it's, you know, God wants you to choose life, not death. And you need to give your life to God, and God will, God has a future for you. And I said, he's calling you to be a leader of man. And we prayed for him, and he left. We had a pastor's we have a pastor's conference every year. And some years later, probably 10 years later, and he, this young pastor came up to me and he said, do you remember me? I said, no, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't. I see a lot of people. He said, I came forward, I was going to kill myself out in this village, which you can't pronounce. And he said, you saved my life. He said, today I'm a pastor of two churches and uh, he's married with kids. It's just amazing what God can do. You know, if you've got fears and worries, you know, the Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord for he cares for you. He's a God of love. And I just can't express how good he is. He gives us joy. He gives us peace. He gives us patience. I love him. I just want to spend time. How are we doing on time? That's overrun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is a God that heals. God is a God that delivers. Just supernatural things. I was, uh, I'll tell you one more story. I was, I was up in the north of England and I felt God tell me to go to this men's no, family conference right up the north there. I don't remember the name of the town now, but we didn't have the money. There was a hotel or anything like that. And uh, one of the friends in my chapter, my treasurer, had a little caravan. He said, you can borrow my caravan. I thought, well, that's good. We could sleep in there and cook in there. And, so we took this caravan all the way up to North. I spoke with a farmer. He let me put it in a field. It didn't cost us anything. We cook in there so we could eat. And on the very last night, I had a 20-pound note left and a five-pound note left. And I said to our kids as they went into the last children's meeting for the evening, when you come out, wait for us here. Don't go anywhere. Wait for us here. I've got $5. We're all going to have a bag of French fries, uh, of chips. And uh, yeah. So we went into the meeting, and before it started, the MC said, There's a brother here. I want to get, let him speak for a minute. And he was, on Tuesday, he was going to Russia. It was just opened up to take Bibles in. And after he'd spoken, the, the, the MC again spoke and he said, We're going to help this brother. We're going to buy some Bibles for this guy. He, you know, he's, he's, he's doing it. We need to support him. If we can't go, then we need to send somebody. So we're going to send a basket round for this particular thing. And this basket started coming round and round. And I was going, Lord, I can't give anything. I know I want to. You know, I'm, I'm a missionary. I want to be a missionary myself. But I have $20. And without it, the, my tank was between half and quarter. And, and you know, even with the $20, even though gas was a lot cheaper then, you know, it's going to be tight to get home. But I knew I could get home. And I said, I can't give this five, Lord. And I promised my kids, you know, they're going to be looking outside. What am I going to say to them? And this fight was going on inside me. And this basket was getting closer and closer. And in the end, it got to me and I just, oh, and I just threw them both in the, in the basket. <laughs> so after it gone, I said to the first, I'll just put the 25 in the basket. She said, do you think God give it, told you to do that? I said, I believe he did. And he'll look after us. So at the end of the meeting, we said, well, let's go and face our, our two kids, Sam, Sam and Holly, and uh, tell them the bad news. <laughs> so as we came out, before the kids, we found the kids, another guy by the name of John Gargan, he's a fantastic guy. He lives in Massachusetts now, but he was in England at the time at the air base. He goes, hey, Malcolm, I heard you were here, but I hadn't seen you. He said, we're going to McDonald's. Do you want to come join us? And of course, we've got no money. I said, no. I said, you know, it's a long drive. We, you know, we need to get going. He goes, it's my treat, you know. I said, but there's all four of us. He said, that's no problem. So we all went to McDonald's, and he just looks up at the menu board, and he goes to my two kids, just boy, order whatever you want. And boy, they did. <laughs> they had hamburger, fries, or chips and uh, milkshakes and it made me weep i thought you know my father can look after my father in heaven can look after my kids better than i can and so we we did that and we settled down went back and got our 
caravan. I said, look, we're going to run out of gas fairly soon. But we've got this caravan. We're going to drive, start driving down the, the motorway until it runs out. And then what we'll do, we'll park on the side somewhere. And on Tuesday, we used to get family allowance. I don't know if we still get that in England. But I said, we can find a, a, a post office and they'll give us some money to get us home. But we're just going to have to do that. Well, we started to drive down. They settled down for the night, slept. And I kept driving and I kept driving and I kept driving. And I refused to look at the fuel gauge. I knew if I looked at it, my faith would, would waver. We just kept going and kept going and kept going. And about quarter to four in the morning, I pulled into our drive. It's just a miracle. I don't know how it happened, but I don't want to know. All I know is it happened. And he got us home. And I actually had enough gas to go to work the next day. God is a supernatural God. We've lost that in the church. We've lost, you know, we've become religious. We've become traditional. We've become repetitive in many of the churches today. But God is alive and well and active. And he wants to be involved in your life. And I just recommend him to you. I really do. He'll change your life. He'll give you newness in his life. He'll, he'll, he'll wash away all the junk that we've all done. You know, every, the Bible says every one of us has sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, we're born in sin. We're born in sin. You may find that hard to believe, but the Bible says in the book of uh, uh, Galatians that whatever a man sow, if that's really real, you know, you can't sow an apple seed and get a pear tree. Whatever a man sows, he reaps. And of course, in 1948, my father sowed his seed into my mother, and I'm the result. And if you look at a picture of my father at this age now, you'll see we look very much alike. But before I was born again, I was very much alike him then. Angry, impatient, arrogant, all these things were in me. And they were in me before I was born because that's it, who he was. You know, the first words a baby learns is mama or dada, but they soon learn mine. High Stories Live. And you put two little child in a, in a cot together and give them one toy, they'll fight. We're naturally... We're just naturally uh, ruined in sin, if you like. But Jesus come to set us free. He come to give us an eternal life. I'm excited. I don't want to go yet. I'm ready to, to do more for God, but I'm, we're looking forward to going. You know, the Bible says, mine, was it? mine hasn't even thought about the, the good things that God's laid up for those in heaven who love him. He's, he's preparing. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if, if it wasn't true, I would have told you, and he's coming back for us. One day Jesus is going to come back, whether we accept him now or not, we're all going to bow, he says. And uh, he's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. Well, I could go on and on. I've got lots of things to tell you, but uh, I think I just want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says if we confess with, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead. We should be saved. It's nothing to do with what you've done and nothing to do, you know, you may have done something bad even today. God wants to, it says he's come to deal with our sin, our past, our present sin, and even what we're going to do in the future. God loves you so much. He wants, he wants you to call him father. He wants you to be your son. You know, some religions sort of talk about that we're all children of God. And that's not true. We're all God's creation. Jesus said to different people, your father is the devil. We, we're only children of God when, when we give our life to him, give our heart to him. And it won't change overnight. And it's no good thinking to yourself, you don't know what I've done. No one's done some of the things I've done, I'm sure. I, 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 I'm ashamed, or I was ashamed. I'm not anymore. Because God's given me a new life. Fell out with all my neighbours. I had to sort all that out, fell out with my sister. God just renewed everything in my life, slowly at a time, and he wants to do the same in you. He wants to give you a new life. I just want to give you the opportunity to give your life to God. Give, you, give, give him a, a chance. Let him, let him in. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the hurts, the brokenness that's in you. He wants to heal you. He wants to put his arms around you and love you. 
we're at our time, so I'm going to ask this of you. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, I ask you might repeat this after me. Father, God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess I'm a sinner and I've done many things I shouldn't have done. And many things I haven't done that I should have done. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross in my place. Thank you for giving me new life. I open my heart to you right now. And I receive you as my Saviour and Lord. Give me this new life. Help me to live the way you want me to live. And I promise I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that, doesn't matter if you whatever you felt, there's an exchange going on, a spiritual exchange in heaven. It says even the angels are rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repents right now. Doesn't matter what anybody else tells you, you are born again, you are a Christian, and you are a son of God or a daughter of God. Hallelujah. I think it's time for me to hand back to Mr. Alan Jones. And then I believe we're going to have any questions and answers then. So Thanks, Malcolm. Thanks so much for sharing such an interesting story. And I know there's a lot more you could have shared. Yeah. Uh, a lot of <laughs> other things you've done in your life. Maybe you'll have to come back and share all, all the other okay. things that have happened since then. But yeah. uh, if you pray that prayer that uh, Malcolm led you in just then, then please let us know by contacting us on our hotline, plus four four seven nine four. 3550287 or contact us on our website lifestoriesworldwide.com you can find there and click on to how can I get to know God you can also click on to get a Bible app if you want to know more about God to read the Bible if you don't have a Bible you can find that there so please contact us and let us know what's happened in your life but uh, thanks Mark and I'm going to ask George now to bring any questions to you thanks George okay. Thank you very much, Alan, and thank you very much, Malcolm. What a boy. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad I know you now, not then. <laughs> now, just taking you back to your, your younger days, before you became a Christian, I mean, were you a bit of a rowdy, or did you fight and drink, and how bad were you? Well, I, I don't think I was. I, uh, most of my problems started after I got married. I got married at 21, and it was then I started to go out and, and just... Getting so I'd, I'd, I'd drink too much. I'd wake up in the morning with a black eye, a cut lip, and I'd go into another fight with somebody. And uh, I was, uh, I don't know, I just, uh, something was going wrong inside of me, you know, I was hurting. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, people say they hang out with the wrong crowd. I think I was the wrong crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were saying you were hurting because, I mean, you told at the very beginning about your mother how she tried to not to have you, basically. So yeah. when you found out, how did you feel when you found out that a particular story? Well, I've heard people say that something like that happens and you got rejection. I've never felt rejection. In fact, my brother and, and sister, who were that much older than me, said I was spoiled. I, I got away with a lot more than them. I mean, once I came, they loved me. And uh, they really helped us. You know, they used to help us get out of tr problems. We actually went and lived with them for a while because we had nothing. And in the end, my dad, my dad bought us a caravan just to get rid of us, really. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's something we pray about in, in America. I'm not sure what's going on in England, but they're, they're, they're trying to uh, limit at least abortion, you know, in, in mm -hmm. America. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but uh, it's, it's a, it's a, I find it's a curse on the land, really. But, okay. So you say you never felt rejected. And how did you not get really. on with your mother? No, not at all. And how did you get on with your mother after that then? Well, it was funny because she prayed for me for all these years. And then I would come, I would come down one day and... High Stories Live.